pain But I can't let you hurt me ever again, again. What I gotta do to be loved yeah. What I gotta do to see love oh. Oh. A battle I'm sure to lose Chest wide open from the exit wounds And you pull the trigger the primary purpose of the CAF podcast is to express form for creatives to express their personal views or opinions without restriction or censorship. All views or opinions expressed during the CAF podcast are solely those of individuals expressing such views or opinions and does not reflect the views of the CAF podcast. All right, here we go. Here we go. Season five CAF podcast. Ah, we have come to the end of season five. And uh, this guest, I, I can say this. Um, I've been waiting for this conversation. I wanted to get you in the beginning, but I'll take the end as our final guest of the season. So one, from Shreveport, Louisiana. Two, she's a graduate of the Graveling State University. And three, uh, I didn't know she had this uh, fitness model, workout, bodybuilder thing in her. And I've been so happy and impressed with her. So we want to welcome to the calf, the one and only Miss Jasmine. Hi, thanks for welcome having me. Calf. Welcome to the calf. Yeah, man, long time coming. Like I, I wanted to get you on earlier, but um, I didn't reach out. Mm -hmm. But I said, you know what? You'll be the final episode of this season and we'll rock out like that. Save the best for last. Save the best for last. So, Jasmine, <laughs> welcome to the cab. Thank you. So, the first question that we asked Jasmine is, um, we, we didn't come up with this question. We stole this question from Charlemagne the God. How mm -hmm. is your mental health? Whew, that's a good question. I don't think no one has asked me that in a while. Um, my mental health is, I would say it's, oh, it's, it's going pretty well right now. Like, I'm in tune with myself. Um, um, my faith in God has gotten stronger, so that's helped me with my mental. Um, but yeah, it's it's going good so far. So great. <laughs> okay, that's good to hear. Now, the second question that we ask is because during the pandemic, mm -hmm. me personally, I was on a lot of social media. wasn't nothing else to do, so whatever. But mm -hmm. I saw. Not white women, not Asian, Mexican, Latino, Russian, whatever. I only saw black, excuse me, women getting attacked. If one lady, she was going to her house, if it wasn't for her dog, that dude would have got her. So I'm a big advocate, and I've been asking every woman that came on this calf, do you have a gun, and do you have a gun license? No, I do not have a gun. I do not have a gun license. So what we got to do to get your lease license? So number one, I have a fear of guns. Okay. Let's just say that. So um, growing up, I'm from New Orleans, but I lived in Shreveport. Shreveport adopted me, so it's like my second home. So gotcha. growing up in New York, I mean, in New Orleans, basically I've seen a lot of gun activity and it, I'm kind of shy with it. However, I need to get over that phobia, that fear of it. So I've been going to gun ranges and making sure that I get accustomed to the guns, you know, mm -hmm. so I won't be so afraid of them because they're they're needed sometimes especially women black women we need to yeah. have some 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 form of protection yeah so yeah, but i do have uh -huh. no, go ahead go ahead, go ahead. What you about to but say? i do have a taser <laughs> okay now i'm with that my sister okay she has she's she's licensed she doesn't have a gun but she got the taser that i gave her and it's, it's one mm -hmm. of them tasers that we used to use when we was at nouveau and stuff like that so if you don't yeah. want a gun at least get you a taste, not one of them itty bitty tastes. Get you one with like 5,000 votes, right? Something that's gonna really get them away from you, yes, right? Yes, 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 yes. So, so what first thing first, we're gonna get the license and then just get right. you so you can make your taste illegal and everything else. So, I'm with that. So, good, let's be good to go. Now, this season, Jasmine, uh, as a final episode, we've been talking about black women this whole season. So, but before we get to that. We do have our cards that we got from tonight's conversation. Now, okay. we got relationship and we got nasty. Now, you got to pick seven cards. You can't pick okay. all seven relationships. You can't do six, one, five, two. It has to be four, three. However you want to okay. do it. So, Jasmine, 
How are we doing? We're doing four relationships, three nasty, or four nasty, three relationships. We can do four relationships, three nasty. Four relationships, three nasty. I had a feeling you were going to say that, so let me get this ready. So, okay. <laughs> the first question we've been asking women, this women, women, this whole season, Jasmine, in your own opinion, what is the state of black women in the year 2023? Hmm. I would say we are empowered. At the moment, I feel like Black women right now are coming together more than anything, working, trying to um, maintain a living. I feel like we're at the we're at the state of mind that we can do it. We, I feel like sometimes women fear that we can't accomplish things or can't do things as in a male dominant field. I feel like mm -hmm. we are more active. We're more go getters now. We don't just sit around and let people just take care of us. I feel like we go after what we want now. Hence women empowerment coming together and hosting these events that I've done in Shreveport. Um women empowerment. So yeah, I feel like right now society and women are coming together and trying to, you know, bridge the gap with you know, coming together and just making money and building empires together. So that's how I feel. Okay, okay. Now, go on, let's get to your story. Mm -hmm. Coming from New Orleans to Shreveport, how was that move? Because that, that is a big, that, living in Louisiana, coming from New Orleans, going to anywhere else is a big difference. So how was that for you? Well, it was a, it was a culture shock. I'll tell you that. Okay. Number one, I'm coming to a city where, even though Streetport is only five hours from New Orleans, it's a huge difference, you know? Yes, it is. Um, yes, they don't it even is. like the states here. <laughs> so that was different for me. I had to come to adjustment. And um, for the most part, it was to learn myself because I was just turning 16. I was getting to knowing who I was as a person and um, having an accent. It, I was just different. And coming here is just, I would say it really humbled me. Um, I didn't know a lot of things. I was kind of sheltered at a moment, but coming here, I was able to branch out and um, be Jasmine. Like I was able to find myself here in Shreveport. That's why I feel like Shreveport is my second home. Um, but losing everything and literally having nothing to my name from Katrina and then coming here and starting all over, it was a lot. It was a lot for me. Mm -hmm. But um, I would say that at the moment, um, it has brought me to the woman that I am today, you know, going through that tragedy of Katrina and having these, um, emotions that I feel, I didn't know what to expect. You know, I'm coming to a city where I know anyone I'm, I'm having go happen to go to a high school where, um, it's, it's so segregated. It's, it's now I'm wearing, um, um, plain clothes to school when I literally have no clothes, you know, so I have to go and get hand-me-downs and, 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 and humble myself, you know, so I would say it was, it was different. It was, it was difficult for me, but long story short, um, I basically, I, I adapted and I became Jazz K. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, now give me three things that moving to Shreveport, you said bettered you. Um, moving to the Shreveport bettered me in ways of, I would say, it humbled me. I, oh. I, I, I didn't, yeah, it humbled me a lot. Number two, it, it, I was saying, it humbled me a lot. And then it matured me. Matured you. Mm-hmm. And also it. It really, I want to say it, it, it kind of, it, it empowered me, like coming here, yeah. not knowing anyone, knowing that, yeah, I can, I can actually do something. I can actually go to a city, not knowing anyone and still be blossom and still have my name out there and still do what I want to do and still have this craft and, you know, still be Jasmine. So yeah, it empowered me, it humbled me and it encouraged me to just, you know, keep going every day. Okay. Now let me give you the three things I got going to Shreveport. It ratchetized uh -huh. me. I didn't know how ratchet I was until I got uh -huh. Two, it showed me uh, I'm really into seafood. And three, uh -huh. it did empower me because of the people that I did meet and doing things that, you know, we was doing. It was kind of funny to go to a city, not from that city, and walk to the front of the, of the door of the club. Right. 
or go through the back door where most people who live right. in that city, they still paying and everything. So I'm with exactly. the environment, but it rationalized me to a level that I didn't know I could be on. So those are my three things. I just wanted to see what you was going to say, but I know that got nothing to do with nothing. I just wanted to get that out there. But I mean, it, it is ratchet city, you know, and it's very, very ratchet. But I'm from New Orleans, like we 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 turn up out there. We don't call but it y'all ratchet, not ratchet. But... Y'all, it's it's so in in so in Louisiana, this is what I got. So you got ratchet city, which is Shreveport. You mm-hmm. got Rose City, which is Monroe. You got mm-hmm. Jig City, which is Baton Rouge, and then you got the city, yes. which is New Orleans. Right. Now I don't know what they call Lafayette and and Lake Charles, but. Those four places, if I if I say, yeah, man, we're going to Jig City, everybody know I'm going to Baton Rouge. If I say I'm going <laughs> to the city, everybody know I'm going to New Orleans. If I say I'm going right. to Ratchet City, they know I'm going to Shreveport. Right, right, right. <laughs> so those Shreveport four- Shreveport is the state. Yeah, so those four things, don't, don't, excuse me, those four descriptions, it kind of breaks down Louisiana- to a point where it's like you know what's going on, but New Orleans, I I, I didn't get the ratchet. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah, I get it. I get it. But we we turn up. We have fun. Like New Orleans, yeah. we know how to have a good time. We know how to. Yeah. Ratchet could be a, a a genre of thing. So I've learned so far in Shreveport, it doesn't have to be like a specific thing. It could be like ratchet as I don't know ratchet with the music ratchet with the clothes ratchet with the dancing it's different mm. types of ratchet i've learned to be in here <laughs> and, and then and the difference between the difference between all the cities i think or the difference where to make new orleans different you really mm-hmm. don't have to go to a club to have a good time no no you a bar a, a daiquiri shop <laughs> you can have a good time wherever there's a liquor in a bar yes we have a good time. We could be right outside your grandma's house. We'll we we'll, we can have, have fun a on the block. Good time. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and, and, and let me give this shout out to Brothers Chicken, which is in gas station, which is some of the best chicken I have ever ate. And I and people say it's good when they're drunk. It's good when you're not drunk. So <laughs> it's good all the time. Yeah. 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 So I know they got nothing to do what we talk about, but I'm just I just had a moment. That's all. Yeah. Like, <laughs> real ratchet ass moment. So, but yeah, that's not here though. Okay. So let me continue on. So Going from New Orleans to Shreveport, and you find yourself moving everything. When did Jasmine know who Jasmine really was? To be honest with you, I'm still finding myself. I'm learning myself every day. But I would say this. When I walked into a room and people knew who I was, that made me feel like okay jasmine is becoming what 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 i always wanted to be like now people are recognizing me people are noticing me and based off my craft when i walk into a room and they yell did you work out today okay you you know you know what it is okay (laughs) so that kind of that right there just made me just want to go more and more i see what I, i have going on so yeah, that's what it was. Like every time they see me, did you work out today? Did you do it? I'm like, hold on, hold on. They, they coming at me so fast. I'm like, wait, it's my off day. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's not that time. Yep. Because I, 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 once you started, I think once you started that, I think one, I think it put you in a different atmosphere. Because mm-hmm. now you you're doing something that most people, I'm gonna say this, most people want to do. But they just ain't got the balls to do it. Like, and it's just the most simplest shit ever. Just go to the gym. Yeah. But I'm gonna tell you this though. It is, it it can be discouraging because when I went to the gym, when I first started working out, I literally had no clue what I was doing. I had no clue. I would go into the gym and I would read the the fine print on the machines and mm-hmm. figure out what does this target? What is this? And also, when you're going to the gym, you, you don't really feel, I've learned so far that you don't really feel good. This is me personally, unless I have something cute on. So if I have something cute on, I'm more confident in working out. I feel like, you know, but, and also, <laughs> in a nutshell, when people are around you, they're looking at you. So you might not like that. You might not like that attention because you're not confident in yourself. So, yeah, it's, it's a lot that, that goes with it. Okay. 
Going to a relationship question from tonight's conversation. Mm -hmm. What specific part of you that you never want to change? Mm. What specific part don't of you that you don't want to change? My heart. I don't want to change my heart. I have a heart of gold. I have a heart that's pure and I have a heart that's giving. And so I love that about myself. Wi-Fi going in and out. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. Let me catch it. Okay, go ahead. Okay. I said I have my heart. So okay. I, I wouldn't want to change my heart. I I have a heart full of gold. I have a giving heart, a caring heart. And that makes me who I am. And so by me having this heart, um, I don't want to ever change that. I, I always want to see good in people. I always want to have that 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 kind factor in me, you know? Okay. All right. We're going to a nasty question. Oh, Lord. Jasmine, which sexual position do you enjoy the most? Hmm. I would say missionary. <laughs> this whole season, I've been learning that y'all really like missionary position, but I don't think a lot of women do it. Yeah. I, I, me personally, I like missionary because it's, 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 you're in tune with your partner. Mm -hmm. And so it gives you that, that, um, that sexual energy. It gives, it gives you that aura to where, you know, sex is a, is a chemistry. So, you know, you look into that person's eyes and you're feeling that moment because you're so entwined with each other. Your souls are being shared and twined. So I feel like missionary is like the go-to for me. <laughs> Whatever folks will vote. Okay. Season five Cal Podcast, man. We got Jasmine with us. So ja let's get back to this. Let's get back to this uh working out because uh I'm okay. you know I, I'm a, you know I work out frequently and I think most black women who go get these BBLs, I I, I am against them because I think if you just go to the gym and do it, but hey, I'm not in control of your body, do what you do. So mm -hmm. you said you said something that I I I, I, I caught on to and it and it makes sense the confidence of people looking at you and you can tell the ones who have the confidence because by the, the sexiest shit they wear and the ones who don't by the shit they wear in the gym. So my right. question is for you is, do you think more women should go into the, even though it's their first time in it, should they go in there with that sexy stuff on and maybe they might have their confidence? I feel like whatever is your sexy. You know, you might like a sweatshirt, you might like sweatpants, but whatever makes you feel good, you know, whatever makes you feel fine. Like you might feel confident in just wearing a sports bra, some shorts, but I feel like you look good, you feel better. So mm -hmm. yeah, you're in the gym, you're working out and it boosts your confidence because you're looking at yourself with a cute outfit on, you're working out. So yeah, that has, that's one of the elements that can help you boost your, like going to the gym and, and gaining that confidence. Because like I said before, I didn't have the confidence. I, I went to Gremlin, you know, and I gained that freshman 15. I was dating. I left back, went to, um, went to ma get my master's and gained 20. So <laughs> it was a lot that was transpiring through that moment, but I had to get to a point where I just went. And so what I did was I wrote down on my vanity, did you work out today? And so from that moment, I knew every day I was going to have to get up, have to do my makeup, do my hair in this one particular spot. And so from that moment, I was like, okay, if I see this every day, I know I'm going to want to go. I know I'm going to want to go at some point. And so I eventually I went. And from that day on, I kept going back, writing down um, the days that I went. And before you knew it, it was four years. And so it takes that encouragement. It takes things like wearing different outfits, putting things on your wall, manifesting. It takes um, having support, friends, you know, who, who you around really matters because if your friends are out drinking and your friends are out partying all night and you want to go to the gym, it's not going to work because you're with your friends all night, now it's four in the morning, you want to go to the gym and you're tired. You're, you're not getting to your goals. So the people that's around you matters as well. So yeah, there's a lot of factors that go with it. But to answer your question, yeah, wearing clothes in the gym, definitely, I feel like will help boost you. So let me ask you this, when you go, because most women also think going to the gym and working out, that they're going to get muscular and start looking like a man. So can you break Not that down for the women out there? Because the women that I see in the gym more look more mm -hmm. feminine than anything. 
Yeah. And I, I'll say this, like someone, I feel like this, you will get to where you want to get to before you, before you get to the big bulky, before, before that even happens, you know, you'll see that you'll, you'll slim down. And also it, it helps to have trainers. It helps to have people that can show you the routes to go because you might not know what to do. You might be hitting your arms every day. And all of a sudden now you have big arms, you know, like if you don't know what to do, of course you just might get big, you know? So it, it helps to get the, the training. It helps to do your research. It helps to go out and, um, and find people that you can learn from, you know, Instagram is not just about um, clothes and fashion. It's also, it could be what you make it, what you follow plays on your mental. What I did was I changed my following. Sometimes I'll go and I'll follow some fitness people. You know, I'll learn from them. You can follow and you, you can see on Instagram how they have different fitness models and they're explaining to you everything you need to know. So, yeah, like, I feel like that plays a role. Hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, so, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> is, is, are you on Wi Fi or are you on just regular Wi Fi? Check, check I am Wi-Fi. on just regular. Let me see Wi-Fi. Let me put on my cell phone Wi-Fi. Check, am check I am I going in and out? Yeah, it's it's lagging. And then like for like I want to say the last forty five seconds, you look muffled in the video. Uh, oh, okay. I want to make sure you get that straight before we continue because I don't want you to be looking at the video like why I look like this. No, nah, let, let, let's let's get this. Fixed. Okay, right. I'm on it now. Wi-Fi perfect. Give me I, it, it'll pull up on you. Um, so you see, I don't know if it uh, can I see it with me. Uh, I know I can see it with you on the laptop. Um, because by your name, it'll have like bars, and if it's red, it's terrible, if it's yellow, it's straight, if it's white, it's good. But mm. I don't know if you, I don't know if you can see it on the see, like right now, I got white bars, you're good. Okay, so I'm good to go. Yeah, everything looks okay. Clear. Okay, all right, now. Because uh, Danny missed out on some good information. <laughs> go, so go back to the Instagram part where you say you unfollow people and start following fitness people. Uh, talk about that again. Okay. So basically what I did was um, it trying to get myself into the swing of going to the gym. Mm-hmm. Um, I felt like I needed to change who I was following. Like, because I'm always, I'm not always on Instagram, but for the most part, I scroll every now and then, but it helps to to change what you see all the time, you know? So if I, if I go on my Instagram and I'm seeing fitness, 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 it, it's, it's basically, it's encouraging me to keep going. And like I said before, I didn't know what to do in the gym. I went to the gym and I read the machines, just like on Instagram, people are on Instagram and they're telling you like what to do when you get to the gym, they're explaining to you what to eat so that you won't get bulky. You won't become a man, you know, still keep your femininity. You know, it's so much that, that goes into working out. So like I said before, making sure that you change your Instagram to following positive people, making sure you have people around you that's supporting you, making sure that you do something like positive affirmations, like writing things down like I did before. And also, you know, um, what you have in the, what you have on in the gym really matters. You know, like you see yourself mm-hmm. looking good. You might just turn around and you might see something that you might like, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's where that's where my where my mental is with that. I started sharing what what's that? <laughs> you started <laughs> Yes Lord. Yes Lord. Ladies. Yeah, so that's hard work right there. <laughs> Thank you. Say say that one more time. That's that is hard, hard work. work. This is not surgery. This is not BBL. This is going to the gym and being consistent, what you're doing and sticking to your diet. And it is. It's sticking to your diet. It's not drinking alcohol. And I'm telling you, like, take some time out. I know alcohol is, you know, people like to drink. But if you're trying to go down a fitness route to obtain, you know, your best fitness goals, not drinking for a while is amazing. Take some time yeah. and, you know, focus on that. But I'm also going to say this, Florida, you you piggyback on the people that's doing the 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 BBLs. Now, granted, people, some people, I know you're against it, but I'm not. I feel like Women is their choice. And if you choose to go and you go and you do turn to see your body, that's fine. But you also got to remember that just because you went on that table does not mean you got to, that you can't, um, and that's okay. The part, you know what I'm about th- to that's say? That's the part I, I have a problem with because they'll go get the BBL and think that's it. No, 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 no. 
If you're going to go get the BBL, fine. But if you still have to maintain that figure, you still going to have to do some stuff. Most women, they'll go get it and think that's it. And think, all right, you don't say it up all. I don't, well, I don't know how much the BBL costs, but you don't spend all this money. 15000 Oh, you spend all this money and you finna let it go to waste. What was the point again? You gotta save that, go to the gym, get you a, a dollar. Planet Fitness always got a dollar special going on. Hit the exactly, gym. Exactly, exactly. And you can eat, save that money and eat it instead of keep doing all these BBL. That's why I have a problem with it. They go get the BBL, but then two months, uh, not even say two months, five months later, you back looking like you was. So you, exactly. you tell me you, you got another 15,000 just sitting around to go get another BBL? Some people do, but unfortunately, I'm not one of them people that just about to waste fifteen thousand. That's not me. <laughs> yeah. so, I'm gonna yeah, work hard for it. Yeah. What up, Perk? What up with it? Hey, Perk. How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm good. Right. So let's let's go to a, another relationship question. So, in one of your previous relationships or that you was official with, did you ever cheat on your mate? I feel like, no, I feel like that right there is a cross. I feel like why do that when you could just leave, basically. (laughs) So you left or you didn't do it? I didn't do it. Okay. I I left before I did. Okay. It was lined up now. It was lined up. Ah, okay. 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 All right, Gordon. What was lined up? What you mean? It's always somebody that's ready. Oh wow. <laughs> oh wow. Jazz, <laughs> in the bedroom, do you prefer to be dominant or the submissive one? You said both? Okay. Is the other is your significant other in the room? Yes. Just okay. came. Then you look to the side. I was like, okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So now, now I've just seen that you got sponsored by C4. Yes. How did that come about? Because um, you, you definitely got to tell me that because uh, as a person who drinks it, mm-hmm. I'm trying to figure out what I need to do. At least so basically, <laughs> basically what I, go ahead, what you say? I just need me just you know a pack every month. That's it. I literally, out of. literally. What I did was, um, so I've been doing. You know, y'all know I've been modeling for a while. So, mm-hmm. um, I was reached. My agent reached out to me and told me that they had an event in Dallas, WWE. It was the first time they've been back since the pandemic. So, mm-hmm. um, when I got there, hi. When I got there, um, I was introduced to the C4 executives. They were there. They all flew down from LA because C4 was partnering with um, WWE. And so from there, I just basically was working and I was promoting a brand, being a brand ambassador. Just um, And I did that for about, I want to say 70, I did 76 hours <laughs> during that event. And I literally had probably no sleep. So I was working, 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 12, 14 hour shifts, promoting the brand. Um, and from that, they love my personality. And so um, that allowed me to have a conversation with one of C4 reps. And so telling him what I do and um, in my fitness brand and how I'm very involved in the city in Shreveport and what I can do to be an asset to the company, they suggested that I become a brand ambassador with them. And so from that, they were, um, we had conversations. They put me in, the, in, in front of the marketing executive. And from there, we had a conversation. And I shot my first commercial in Dallas from there. And now they send me packages and I just promote the brand. Yeah, whatever you got that you don't want, send to me. Because I, I drink okay. one. I drink, I mean, between them and Zola is the only ones mm-hmm. I drink. I don't do that. I haven't stuff. had that one yet. It's 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 a, it's it's about the same impact. I only only mm-hmm. thing I would say about C four is I've tried the pre workout. The Zoa it just come in the can, so I really can't give you exactly what it do. But if you drink it, you you'll feel it. 
Yes. But you're not worried, but we're not worried about it. We're about C4. C4, exactly. C4 has different brands. So they have one that's um for a pre-workout. They have one that's like a I wanna I wanna say like reference a Red Bull kind of sorta. It's get it gives you that, but this one gives you a clean cut energy like for every day. So it's, it doesn't give you that itchy feeling when you're not moving so fast. Because when you do pre-workout, you know you gotta immediately go and work out. So when you're doing um, the smart energy ones, that's just more so of your every day. If you have a really, really busy day and you can't drink any coffee, you just want some extra push, then they have the, the smart energy one as well. Now, Jasmine, what's the heaviest you ever been? The heaviest? I've, ooh, I want to say 165. And that was when you were working out and everything? No, that was when I wasn't working out. Mm. Now, yeah. okay, now, let, let me switch it back to this. Now, the, the women who do go to the gym and they feel mm-hmm. like they're getting creeped out by the men who are watching them. I know you probably done went through that plenty of times. Yes. Yes, so, the creeps. The ones that be sliding in your DMs after you don't posted a picture and all that. And then, then they even know nasty ones, they just see you in the gym knowing damn well they don't know nothing about this machine but come work out next to you. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So how, or just how, ask how, me questions. Yeah. How, so how's you how's how was dealing with that? I, honestly, it's it's kind of hard because promoting myself, people would look at it. So she's she's showing out, or she want to show off her body, or she wants to be you know naked all the time. No, I worked hard for this body. I worked hard for this. So. I'm going to promote myself. I'm going to put, I'm going to post myself on Instagram in short shorts because I worked hard for it. I'm going to post myself in a bikini like I did before because I worked hard for this body. So if you don't, if I I feel like if you work hard, why not show it off? You know? Yeah, Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Exactly. So, I mean, at the end of the day, me taking the time out to work on me, why not celebrate it? I'm celebrating me. I like to wear clothes. I like to look good in my clothes. So yeah, I just, but a lot of men, they take it and they, they come at you very negatively. They, they come at you as if like, you're just a piece of piece of, you know, candy or something like somebody that they they can just play with or just fall in your DMs when they see you and just be weird. Or it's just, yeah, I don't, I don't respond to DMs. I open it and I close them. (laughs) Because yeah, I'm just for, so used to it. Yeah, thank you for responding to this one, though. Thank you, thank you. Of course, Florida, I always respond to you. All right, okay. <laughs> All right, one, we got one more relationship, one more next question. Okay, so uh, third relationship question. If today, well, if tomorrow was the last day that you could spend time with your significant other, your boo, what are the first five things that you're going to do? Ooh. First, we would... I mean, really enjoy each other's company. You say the last, the very last time we will be together? This is the last time you will ever see your boo ever again in life. Ooh. What are the, what are the first five things you're going to do? Mm. Okay. Um, after, after Monday, you will never see him again. He will never see you again. Ouch. Well, what for sure, we're, we're going to be intimate, for sure. That's, yeah. that's one thing. You Number two, that. I think we would... Um, we would enjoy a meal together, conversation. Did somebody just walk past your car, Quito? Yeah, yeah. I wonder how bad ass kids. Oh. You got the bad. <laughs> yeah, he just ran right by. I'm, I'm helping her move, so she, that's where I am now. Mm-hmm. Okay. Go ahead. But yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you're good, you're good. But um, yeah, like we would share a meal together. We'll be share intimate. We'll go to church. Um, we would mm, have some fun, do some some kind of fun activity, and then back to being right. intimate. <laughs> I mean, you ain't got before you eat. Do, do the first five things you're gonna do because uh, midnight, midnight Tuesday. This is it. You'll never see that's this it. guy again. He will never see you again. So that's it. All right, all right. Going to your last nasty question. If you can describe in in, in extreme details your most thought up thought out sexual fantasy what is it being catered to 
like a room full of roses and um, candles and just being catered to my feet being rubbed and things of that sort. Just everything's just about me. <laughs> typical, right? <laughs> you shake your head like typical for you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that was PG, but we'll let it ride. Okay. So this season, once again, Jazz, we're talking about black women. So my question is, do you think black women and black men are not dating enough? I mean, a lot of people don't really date anymore, you know, honestly. Really? So, yeah, you already see a lot of people dating. You, you see a lot of situationships. Oh, plenty of those. But no dating. Ooh. And if you are dating, people find it weird. They feel like you can't talk to multiple people at one time. You're classified as being a hoe or something. Well, I'm going to say this. I, I, I noticed that older women... And when I mean older, I'm talking about 36 and above. They're dating. It's the younger ones. Yeah. The younger generation are root. They ruthless. They they something different. I wasn't brought up like that. I I it's it's completely different. They aggressive. Uh, okay, very. <laughs> Taking a young girl on a date, she don't know what that is. Mm-mm. No. They feel like if you ain't giving to the bag, if you ain't bag this and bag that, if you ain't, it's it's, it's kind of, it's no one's looking for love anymore. Everybody just kind of just like searching for what they can get out of a person. It's just more so of just, if got, he ain't coming to me, huh? You got to pay for their time, man. There you go. You gotta pay for they, they babysitter and pay for their outfit and. You uh, just met a person. Yeah, you know, you got to pay for a house, a light bill, and a water bill. You got to buy her outfit, buy her hair. You just met the girl yesterday. <laughs> yeah. I say go to Burger King on the first date. Are you switching I don't from blame McDonald's? You. you said what? You switching from McDonald's? No, I never said McDonald's. You all said McDonald's. I never I'm so said. glad. You said McDonald's know. disgusted. <laughs> Yeah. But but McDonald's still making money, regardless of what nobody says. However bad that bread burnt and it's still in your system, they still making money. Big okay. Mac fanatic. That, Big Mac fanatic. Man, and that ice cream machine ain't never working. Never. It do work. On the, on the hood side, it never worked. White people side, <laughs> always work. McFlurry, McShake, always. you get it. On the white people side, it always work. In the hood, you might, it might work every other 15 days. If you want to know what my first day probably would be, it probably would be the Chick Fil A or Chinese spot. There we go. Chick-fil-A. I won't even get no food. And they got good customer service. There we go. We'll sit in the car and talk. Yes, that's a good. <laughs> so I'm glad you brought that up too, Janice, because you it, it are certain women when they do come in dating, um, they are not into you picking them up. They'd rather meet you somewhere for the first date. So, That's if, true. so no, no, I'm just asking you, are you that type of girl like come pick me up or I'll meet you at that spot? I'm gonna meet you and especially if I don't know you, I'm gonna make sure somebody around know what's going on. Cause mm-hmm. dating, like going to meet somebody and having them pick you up, you you don't know this person like that. So you gotta you have to you have to, you know, put your guard up just for a while until that person deserves, until that person shows you that they're worthy of you dropping your guard. Mm-hmm. So when, so when you hear the word, a man come to you and be like, I want a traditional woman, but he like, I should pick you up. You know, I, I'm, I should do this and that then. But you're like, no, I will meet you there. Mm-hmm. But everybody keeps saying they want a traditional woman. So, I mean, but I'm, Today's society, there no, there's not really a traditional woman. Mm. We got women taking out trash. We got women cleaning cars. So it's not really a traditional woman, I believe. So in your own opinion, what is what is the, a traditional woman? Um, traditional woman will go back to the will go back to what we talked about before: staying in the house, what people think they're supposed to be doing, cooking, cleaning, nurturing, taking care of the kids. And letting the guy go out and take care of everything, the, the the finances and all that. But I feel like when you're a partner, y'all both can do the same thing. Y'all, you can make the bread, he can make the bread, and the more bread y'all got, y'all got it together. 
but that's a traditional woman. People feel like, oh, well, I'm going to be this person and she ain't got to worry about nothing. She can just stay at house in the home all day. You don't really see women like that anymore. You see women striving to go out and get it too. So what do you think about the women who want a traditional man but don't want to be a traditional woman? Double standards. You can't want that. You, you got to be able to give too. Like you got to, what, what, what are you bringing to the table? People say, oh, I am the table. No, that's not okay. You have to bring something too. <laughs> it don't work like that. She said, what if they break when they say they are the table? <laughs> no. I mean, that shit is the most dummest shit ever. Like when somebody right. says, I mean, I think it's, I think, so I think most people say that to, to make a statement, but not understanding what that really means. Like, if you're going to be the stable, the table, that means you're the foundation. And like she said, that pretty much means you're going to bring a whole lot to the table so that they can sit at the table. I mean, you got, you know, the, you know, you got four legs on the, on the ground and that person might not have to sit on the ground. So I think some people just say it, but not knowing what it means. It's just uh, exactly bigger speech to say, oh, I am the table, blah, blah, blah. And they might have heard E.T., the preacher, say it. Uh, and they just... Went along with it, but yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah I, I, I agree. Yeah, I, I, that's. Well, I don't think, I don't think me and you would be the table though, because I think me and you both have different. I know me and you both have different things, so I think we we both are like, uh, what's the word? Um, we could go either way, to where we could go 50-50. Or we could go 70, 30, either way. Where even as, like, I know a lot of dudes who can't deal with a woman who make more money than them. Like, they just not made that way. And to me, that's like, I feel like, like she said, some people not in love no more. Some people just getting into it for the business part, but um, I don't I don't feel like that lasts long. Because if somebody messed the business plan up, then what happened? Exactly. exactly. I just feel like, I just feel like when, when you do that, you bake what you're saying is, this is this when 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 a man or a woman come each other and say this is my table. What what basically what you telling the person is, is is you you gotta bow down to me or some shit like that. Like I just think it's stupid. Yeah. Like, I think, huh? You don't know later. Yeah, like I just think it's like one of them things. Like if if especially when it comes to a woman, like if you always present your table to a man, how you know this man? Might not he might can take care of your table better than you can, and mm. then on the flip side, how can it when a man bring a table? A woman that's a woman is a nurture, period. She might make your table look 10 mm. times better than I'm what you already got. I'm gonna disagree with you with some of that the nurturing part because some women don't know how to cook a thing, and so we well, come okay. Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm, no, no, I'm with you, but what if like I like my, my cousin, she don't know how to cook clean another day. But if you give her a business portfolio, she will work your shit and go get you the loans and business grants and all that. Now she ain't gonna cook, mm-hmm. but damn it, she gonna make sure some table on. She gonna bring, make sure she gonna make sure no money on that table. That's that is her thing. Even when it comes to real estate, she'll look, she'll go work out real estate deals and, and get a, a better house than what she got just with you, with just off your portfolio. Well, I think, but I think now, I think too, I think we've and. I guess you can say generation, the last couple generations, people have, there's no more like the Bill Cosby's families, the family matter families anymore. So you have, people don't want to, people want that, but they really don't want that. Like they want the traditional uh, relationship, but they don't want to input that. So I think a lot of people just get in relationships thinking like, okay, it's going to be like this or it's going to be that, but not understanding that the two people in a relationship, that's what's got to fit. Not exactly. what it's Because I feel like that's what's wrong with a lot. A lot of the people that we went to school with who have gotten married and got divorces has been because they thought it was one way and they never like, they never had those serious conversations. I don't think people uh, as I tell my kids every day, uh, everybody want to be real into a real walk in the room. And if you can't have the real conversations, then when when the rubber hit the road is when the problems uh, start piling up. True. 
And and what I would also say, and to add on to that, is communication too. You got to be able to communicate. Yeah. You got to be able to comprehend. Because at the end of the day, communication is key. But also with that is comprehending. I can communicate with you all day, but if you're not comprehending what I'm saying, it's going nowhere. Yes. Some people can't read the room. No. And it's very, very important to read the room. Very. I mean, we don't have the skill to do that, you know? Uh, all right, Jasmine, going to your last relationship question from tonight's conversation. When you're Hold having on, I'm going to switch before you ask that. Alpha. Yeah, no, no, say that. I'm 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 told that question. I went out there. I was gonna go to that, but since you asked it, hold on, let me ask this question. When you have a stress stressful day, what would you like your mate to do with you to deal with to help you deal with your day? Give me money to go shopping. Like a self-care <laughs> yeah, day. Okay, never mind. Per go with purpose. I'm serious, because if go I'm stressed, Chris. I like I like retail therapy. <laughs> No, never mind. Go ahead. Well, go, at, go, least, go. at least she know what she need, and that's for her man to figure out. Yeah, okay. Now, back to Perk question. <laughs> we ain't going to stay on that long. <laughs> go ahead, Perk. Ask your question again. No, I, I, my question was Alpha Beta. Jazz? Yeah, that ain't you, nigga. So, am I that? Are you that? And second part, do does your mate have to be Alpha Beta? An alpha man. Okay. Yeah, I are like you, a man at that. Am I beta? Are you alpha or beta? Um, I'm. I wouldn't say I'm alpha, but to a certain extent, I know how to allow my man to be alpha when it's time to be alpha. That ain't got nothing to do with you, alpha or beta. I mean, but I'm. I'm alpha though. I feel like I'm. I'm confident in what I have going. I. I, I go after what I need to go after. You know, and I don't shy away from anything. If I want to do something, I'm going to do it. No, you 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 went with what I said because I've been telling them for the longest that so the argument has been that two alphas can't be together. Uh and I've been saying for the longest they can because a lot of people feel like when when men say that they want somebody submissive, it's not for them as well. Like men who say they want a submissive woman that does not mean that they can't be submissive to that woman. Exactly. And I think society and people in general take that as, well, the man saying he want a submissive woman meaning that she's always got to be submissive, and that's not true. No, I I'm very submissive. I, I know how to, I know how to allow my man to feel like he's the man. You know, I don't, I like for him to understand that at the end of the day, I, I do still need you. You know, I don't, I don't go out and change my tire because I feel like you know, I could have I could have him do it. You know, that's somebody that I would love to 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 have that manly role. I don't have to do it. I don't have to mess up my clothes. You know, I can change the tire. I feel like I can. I don't have a problem with sub being submissive and letting him take take control over it. Or, for instance, if I um putting gas in my car, you know, that's thing that I I hate doing. You know, so in the day because you know gas stations that's the worst place for a female to go to because them people are ruthless there. <laughs> Everybody else want to get these Cal podcast questions first? Mm, I, don't know. I, I think she said what what we've been talking about is is a lot of men being a safe place. A lot of men getting relationships don't have a safe place, and that's important for your partner to have a safe place. You know, it's important to know, to know that your partner doesn't have to carry that financial burden all on themselves. It's important to know that he got a partner that's that's able to go out and get it just as well as he is able to go out and get it. You know, even though you might not have to work as hard, but as long as, you know, you, somebody is taking care of it and taking the initiative of doing something, you can lay back a little bit. You can do what you got to do. But at the same time, you're still able to make money. You're still able to go do your dreams and everything you want to without having any issues. So you could be submissive and you could be a, a dominant and I mean, an alpha female and an alpha man could, could, could really be together. They're a power, that's a power couple. Beyonce is literally an alpha female and Jay-Z is an alpha female, I mean, male. They get along, they have problems, but they still get along though. Yeah, just, just don't get caught in the elevator. 
elevators for me. All right. <laughs> so this is a, our Cal podcast question. Jasmine is going to be one or the other, fill in the blank. But if you try to play us and not give us an answer, we'll be on this bitch all night until we get an answer. Okay. So the first question, Jasmine, love or money? Whew. That's a real question. Cal Podcast. Cal Podcast. You're baby in the room, too. Cal Podcast. People have money and not happy. Mm. So, so I'd rather have the love. Love. If I know somebody yeah. love me, I can go out and make my own money. All right. Financial literacy or health literacy? Health literacy. All right. you, you can pick one. You can pick one out of three or two out of three, but you can't pick three out of three. T-shirt and okay. panties, lingerie, or nothing at all? <coughs> nothing. Mm. <laughs> Jasmine, how do you like your men? Skinny, bulk, or big boy season? In between. Can I say in between? I'm going to let it slide because it's just been a lot of up and down with this question. So in between what, though? I would say both, you know, have, that I'm a fitness girl. So I like my man to have, fit, have you know, a be muscular and into the gym just as well as I am. So, yeah, muscular and fit. Okay. Jason, how many baby mamas is it too many? Who one too many. One too many. <laughs> yeah, never Jasmine. If your pH balance is off, do you let them go downtown? <laughs> no, because I respect myself too much. So let me freshen up right quick. Let me get it right before I present it to you. Jasmine, is waiting 90 days even worth it? What? Hell no. <laughs> is that even an option? <laughs> do people I'm, still yeah, do that? Hey, you never know. Do you so, want to make the move they doing it? Right. For real. <laughs> Jasmine, who's more important in a black girl life, her mother or her father? That mother, that mother, that mother is something else. Your mom ain't nothing like a mother's love. Because a lot of women really don't have their father figures around. Like myself, I didn't have my dad. So I, I gained all my knowledge and everything from my mom. So my mother's love for me. What is the best advice a black woman ever gave you? Oh, that was that's a good one. Um, I love how you are unapologetically you. Mm -hmm. Fill in the blank, Jasmine. Black men should blank for black women. Black men should blank for black women. Mm hmm. I would say support. Support. All right. Black women should for black men. And you can't use the same answer. Empower. Empower. That's the new one. Let me write that down. Jasmine. Because a lot of these women don't do it. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, no. Go ahead. Finish what you're about to say. I'll say a lot of these women don't, don't encourage their significant, their men. They, they feel like a man that don't have any feelings. No, I feel like men have feelings. Men go through things too. So having somebody around you to encourage you to keep going, you never know. They might not be the person to tell you what's going on. They might not be the person to be vulnerable and come out with their feelings. Because, you know, sometimes they say a man is supposed to cry. But at the end of the day, be that woman to em empower your man and empower that person because em empower your man in particular because that's what they need. Jasmine, you can have a conversation with three black women, dead or alive. Who are they? Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe. Black women. Oh, black women. Black women. Black, black women. women. But, um, <laughs> say, okay. This is another one we don't know about. I know it's a porn star named Marilyn Monroe. She black. Black women. But that's not here or there. Okay. I would say Michelle Obama, number Obama one. Obama is black. Yes. I would say Oprah. Oprah is back. And I would say, I want to pick somebody that's not here. Um, that's a black person that's not here. To be honest with you, I'm going to say this. I want to talk to Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks. 
Uh-huh. Like for yeah, real. Yeah. I, I feel like she, she didn't get off that bus for a reason. And I want to know what happened. I want to talk to her. Because if she didn't get off that bus, a lot of things wouldn't be right right now. So That's she, good. That's good. She was tired. She was. Her That's feet crazy. was hurting. Scotty had That's some a, heels on or something. My, one, one of my professors was like, what the world probably like, baby, mama wasn't trying to start a revolution. My feet was hurting. Exactly. Every, every time, every ever since he said, I'm just thinking about it, like she probably. I don't, that is a good question. Like she probably was like, my feet hurt. I've been cleaning these white folks' bathroom. I ain't gonna go to no back of the bus. <laughs> exactly. She's just she tired. Just started, start a whole damn revolution with the Montgomery bus boycott. So, so thankful okay. for her and her. I'm so thankful for her though. <laughs> mm-hmm. So and Jasmine, this is the Cal Podcast question. We've been asking everybody this question. Who has the better pancakes, water burger or cracker barrel? Number one, I don't eat cracker barrel, so I don't even know. I just found out cracker barrel existed in Shreveport. So oh, wow. Yeah. Um, so you say who else? Water burger. I don't eat water burger. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even be real and ask. Well, you know what? I eat Whataburger, but I really don't. So, like, if I do go to Whataburger, I'll get like a Bob. That's like a breakfast on the bun with like some eggs. Got, and they, got, they, got, they got pancakes. Next time you go on your cheat day, what do you need okay. cheat day? Because they're good. They're good. Good going to the gym. Order the okay. pancakes. They're not frozen, they make them fresh. Okay. Okay. I'll but try then, the pancakes. But, but you also have to go to Cracker Bear to try their pancakes and let us know which one is better. Okay, I'll definitely let you know. Because the Cracker Barrel out here and it's a Whataburger right by each other on Pines Road. It's so I'm going to yeah, definitely go. It. So that is a tie, my guy. It's a tie. <laughs> so. Well, Jasmine, what this you is part. What'd you say, Kurt? Huh? What'd you say? Who's better? Oh, he's Whataburger. I'm, I'm Cracker Barrel. So that's all good. But Jasmine, this is part of the show we hear the flow where you can promote your IG, your business, whatever, C4, I'll at your boy, but we're going to give you the floor. Do what you want to do. Say what you want to say. Okay. Well, my name is Jess K. Follow me on Instagram at J-A-S-S-K. Follow me on my fitness page. It's um, Get Fit with Jess K. Um, and yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> last, last Look for thing, great Jess- things coming with me. Last thing, Jasmine, I'm going to show you a picture of this black woman. I want you to tell us three things about her that we might not know. You might have seen her down, might have came to ground, Monroe. I don't, maybe New Orleans, I don't know. But tell us three things about this black woman that we don't know about. Oh, um, she, that you don't know about me. Um, I am, let's see. That you don't mind that it, it'll end up on YouTube. <laughs> Okay, let me really think about this one. Um, yeah. I would say that people don't know about me that I'm really a sweetheart. Like, I'm really a sweet, I'm really, really, really a sweetheart. Um, I love to help people. Um, and uh, I like to turn up. I like to drink. I like to, you know, turn up and do whoever right things with my hood right friends. <laughs> So I'm pretty sure they know that already. <laughs> no, they probably don't. I'm pretty they sure y'all know. We, not, not, we know, but they don't. So we 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 on, on here we don't bring people down to our rationalists. We elevate people. So we lie. But we lie up. We lie <laughs> up. And we tell them, you know, you don't work with you know the best of the best. You got your own Instagram podcast. We we lie. We lie up. It's up to you to tell them the truth. That's not our job. Yeah. <laughs> so last question, Jasmine. Going into 2023, I mean, we'll still finish off. What do black women need to do better in the year 2023? Um, this I feel like black women need to get rid of the jealousy, get rid of the the wanting to up the next person. Just be happy for that person's success. I feel like a lot of people, a lot of women, um, would look at your success and compare them to, to themselves. So I feel like a lot of women should stop comparing themselves to other women. 
Um, and just go after what you want to, because just like how that person got theirs, your time will, will come as well. So I don't feel like a lot of women need to just, just let it go. Your time is coming. Just be happy for that person and rejoice what they have going on. And for sure, your time is going to come and they'll celebrate you. Season five cap podcast, the official last video of the season. We got my homegirl Jasmine to come kick with us to wrap things up, saving the best for last. Uh, two things. We, I invite you back for our 100th episode, which will be uh, not this Sunday, but the Sunday after. It might change. I don't know. We got to talk about that. Uh, but also, June 16th to the 19th, we're going to be in Houston celebrating DJ Star birthday bash week. You're welcome. You're Rest welcome in peace, come. Star. Yeah, you're more than welcome to come. And, and, and always, if you need us to promote saying the thing, just let us know. Uh, C4, holla at your boy. I do push-ups. And, and I'm also going to add something, too. What? Um, so at the moment, I'm working with 50 Cent in Shreveport. And oh, wow. so he's going to he's bringing the film industry here. So I'm, I have my hands wrapped around that, too. So I'll be on the lookout because I'll have a, my casting company called K Castings of Shreveport. So I'll be doing a lot of casting calls for people to come and, you know, get in the film industry in Shreveport. I'll so that's there. coming I'll, really soon. Call me. I'll be there. I'll be there. No, no BS. Call me. I'm coming. I'm coming. Definitely. It's going to be like a 48-hour casting call. So call everybody me. can come out and take your pictures and see where you fit in. Now, anyone can come. Dancers, call singers, me. actors. I don't call care if you juggle. Me. Call <laughs> me. I will be Yes. There. I will be there. Well, Boo, we do appreciate you coming to help us wrap up this season. Uh, mm -hmm. That is the final episode. This is big. Once again, we'll let you know about the 100 episode. Perk, you got anything? I'm good. Appreciate it for coming. Thanks, Perk. Good to see y'all. Always, like I always said, we're gonna get better, do better. Quita was all. Uh, TJ probably cutting his toenails, I don't know. But that's Perk. Jasmine, what's the next to get coming on? And y'all have a good night. G14 classified. That's good. Headline Starlight. Long live DJ Star. Star.